Now we're going to talk about instruction encodings. This is how we take the MIPS instructions that we've talked about so far and we encode them into bits, so ones and zeros. So this ones and zeros is called machine language. And the problem is that computers don't understand this here. So we've been writing instructions as add R8, R17, R18, and computers don't understand that. They need it translated into ones and zeros before they can understand what's going on. So let's take a look at an example. Here's an instruction. We're going to do add R8, R17, R18. So we're going to add R17 and R18 and store them into R8. And let's see what this looks like when we convert it to machine language. So there it is. It's 32 ones and zeros. And you can see I've color-coded some of these zeros and ones so that you can see where they match up. These bits here correspond to add. These bits here correspond to this register. These bits to that register. These bits to that register, etc. Now, these color codings give you a hint that there's some logical distinction going on here. And in fact, in MIPS instructions, we have logical fields. So you usually divide up a MIPS instruction this way, and we have first the op code. That's the instruction that you're doing, or the operation code. Then we have a bunch of fields for the registers. So you can see we have three fields here, two fields for the two source registers, and one field for the destination register. And then we have some fields for some other information. In this case, a shift amount and a function code. So let's take a look at these instruction fields in a little more detail. So the first one we talked about is the opcode, and this is the operation. So this is an add or a load word or a branch equal. That's specified in the opcode. And in MIPS, this is six bits. Then we have the first source register, which is five bits, and the second source register, which is five bits, and finally the destination register, which is five bits. Then the last two chunks are the shift amount and the function selector. So the function selector here works together with the opcode to decide exactly what you do. So for example, you'll see an example here which says the function selector for add it's 32 and for subtract it's 34. And this makes a lot of sense. So remember from two's complement. So if we have a two's complement number and we want to do subtraction, it's basically the same as an addition. So the opcode for subtraction and addition is going to be the same. You just change the function to change the operation. So between the opcode and the function, you decide exactly what the instruction is going to do. So question, why do we have five bits for each of the registers in the instruction? Well, the reason for this is we need five bits to specify which register. We have 32 registers, and so we need five bits to specify which one of them, because two to the fifth is 32. We don't need a special bit to specify whether we read or write, because we know that based on the field. So these two fields here, these are the two source registers. So we know we're going to read these values. And this is the destination register. So we know we're going to write to that value. 